All right, let's evaluate some limits without uh, actually having the graph of the limits. So let's say we have, uh, first problem we have is limit as x goes to three of x plus two. Well, we should know that x plus two is some line. I mean, we could graph it if we want, but we don't really need to in this case. Um, so the limit as x goes to three of x plus two, well, in this case, it looks like there's no domain issues or anything. So we can just directly plug it in and uh, so that would just be, uh, we can, so here, f of x is, is equal to x plus two, right? And if we wanna know what the limit as this function goes to three is, well, that's just f of three, and that's just three plus two, which is just five. So we can just directly plug it into this function. So this is no domain issues, no nothing. So the limit as x plus two goes to, as x goes to three of x plus two is just five. Okay, so that one's easy, pretty, pretty easy. All right, let's do, uh, a little bit more complicated one. Let's say we have the limit as x approaches one of x squared minus one over x minus one. Okay, so in this case, uh, let's define our function. Uh, f of x is equal to x squared minus one over x minus one. So the first thing you should try is to just plug in the value that they give you. If the function is defined at that point, then the limit is just equal to the function at that point. So the, the function evaluated at that point. So f of one is one squared minus one over one minus one. This is one squared minus one is just zero. One minus one is also zero. So we get zero, zero, zero over zero. We cannot divide by zero. So this doesn't give us any information. So we have to do it some other way. So we gotta notice what this means again. The limit as s goes to one of this function means the limit as x approaches one from the right and from the left. So we could use our calculator and just do the limit as, as x goes to one of x squared minus one over x minus one is approximately just plugging in, you know, 1.0001, right? That's, that's approximately one squared minus one over, sorry, this is x right here, over, um, over 1.0001 minus one, right? We can evaluate this, see what it gives us, see what our approach is, and then also do the same thing from the left. So that means like, really close to one from the left side, which would be 0 0.9999 squared minus one over 0 0.9999 minus one. And then, you know, see what this approaches. Or we can use a little trick, um, a little trick here. And that trick is, okay, so here, one second, let me erase this. So we can notice something pretty, pretty subtle here. We notice that x squared minus one can actually be factored out. So let's just work with the defined function. So we can rewrite f of x as, uh, this is the difference of squares, right? So we can write it as x plus one times x minus one. And if you don't remember how to do that, just review some of the algebra two videos on factoring and that should be, that should come back to you, over x minus one. Well, right here we should notice that we can cancel, we can arbitrarily cancel x minus one and x minus one like such, right? Because this is a multiplication. If we have a times b over b, the b's can go away, right? So we can define our function to be f of x equals x plus one, where x cannot equal one, right? Because we cannot we cannot disregard the domain issue because the function was, was defined to be this. So we can't, just, we can't just alter it. Even though this is equivalent, we still need to keep in mind of the domain issue. So now what we can do is just take the limit as x goes to one of this function, because it is equivalent, it's just not defined at one, but we, st we can still take the limit as, as x goes to one. So I'm gonna rewrite this, so I'm gonna say this is equal to the limit as x goes to one of x plus one. Well, now we can just easily plug it in, and one plus one is, there's no domain issue, that's just two. So the limit as x goes to one of x squared minus one over x minus one is just equal to two. All right, let's do one more. Let's say we have the limit as x approaches, uh, we'll do one again, one of the absolute value of x over x minus one. Okay, so this one is a bit weird. We actually can't do much algebra here to help us solve this uh, algebraically. We, we kind of just have to uh, intuitively solve. And what I mean by that is just plug in values that are really close to one. So let's just do that. There might be a better way in this case. I'm not quite sure of it. So let's just 
let's solve it that way. Um, so what I'm going to do again, we have to remind ourselves that the limit as x goes to 1 of the absolute value of x over x minus 1 means the limit as x goes to 1 from the right and from the left. So I'm going to write this as, I'm going to write numbers close to 1 from the right. So I'll put 1.001. Again, you could put things that are closer, right, if you're doing any calculator, like 1.000001, right, it doesn't matter. Uh, you, you should approach the same value. And then on the bottom, we have 1 point, again, 0, 0, 1, minus 1. So the absolute value of 1.001, that's just the same thing. And then uh, 1.0001 minus 1, uh, let's see, that's 0 0.001, right? So it seems like this, it seems like we're, uh, as we plug in larger and larger numbers, we're going to approach larger and larger, or sorry, sorry, as we plug in numbers that are closer to one, right, much, much closer to one, we just approach large numbers, because our numerator is just going to get closer and closer to one, our denominator is going to get closer and closer to zero, and any small, uh, any small numerator, or a relatively large numerator divided by a very small numerator, that goes to infinity. Okay, so we can say that that's infinity. But we have to check that from the left side it's also infinity. And if so, then we can define this limit to be infinity. So let's check it from the left. So from the left, we have to plug in um, 0 0.0, sorry, not 0 0.0, 0 0.9999, right? So the number's close to 1 from the left. So let's let's take a look on the bottom what happens. We get 0 0.9999 minus 1. Okay, well this is equal to 0 0.9999. And then on the bottom, that's uh let's see, negative 0 0.00001, I believe. Now this is this is something cool happens here. Or um and what what happens is that we actually get we actually get negative infinity on on uh, when we approach it from the left side because we have again we have a numerator that's just going to be close to one and a very small negative numerator and what this means is that this approach is negative infinity so what this tells us is that this limit doesn't exist so this limit does not exist again this limit exists if we just approach if we do it from the left or only from the left and only from the right, but it doesn't exist if we just say as x goes to one from both the left and right. So the answer to this is does not exist. And let's uh, let's actually graph this and let's see how this looks and let's discuss why the limit doesn't exist. So let's pull up Desmos here. And let's graph this function, absolute value of x over x minus one. over x minus 1, and we'll call it y. I think it already did it for us, but we'll say y equals, there we go. So, okay, so this is 1 right here, right? This value right here is 1, you can zoom onto it. Now you should notice that this function, the limit definitely does not exist, because as we approach 1 from the left, we're going to infinity, right? This is not even hitting 1 yet, it's going to infinity. It's going very, very large numbers fast. Now, if we approach it from the left side, we uh, reach negative infinity. So there is no set value for the limit as x goes to 1 uh, for this function right here. All right, talk to you guys in the next video.